Good afternoon and welcome to the Happy Hour Special Radio Show. I'm Nash Dongwell. And I'm Cheeky Hudson. We're here to keep you going until you get to the bar. If you don't want to drink now... You certainly will after this. Today we have a, a special show. The fans have been, have been clamoring for a little bit of Cheeky and Nash history. They feel, they feel like they, you know, they've seen the show, they watch the show, they listen to the show, they know the guests, but they really don't quite know where Cheeky and Nash really come from. The essence of the characters. Yeah, I'm, well, not just their, the characters, because they are, in fact, real live humans. Yes. Um, nice. But they want to know what makes them tick. So we're dedicating this show to what makes Cheeky and Nash tick. Um, what we decided to do was bring on one of our oldest and dearest friends to uh, sort of go through our, our story with you, the fans. Um, so I hope you'll stop clamoring on the blogosphere. Burning up the wires. Over and over again with the Let's who's cheeky, who's people. not. So who we have here is a friend of cheeky and mine from over 20 years ago, really. We've been friends for... 30 years. I'd say 30. 40 years. 30. 30 his, name is, there. his name is Corporal Ace Bestman. He is... Uh, He's a semi-retired army man. Reporting for leisure, sir. I don't know if i call him retired. He's absent without official leave, but he's been so for the better part of 45 years. Um, Status is in question. We think that the army has stopped looking for him now. He's put up such a, a good fight, but Hopefully. you can never really tell with these people. If you recognize me, please don't tell anyone. Also, this show brought to you by Arizona Iced Teas. Arnold Palmer, Southern Style, half and half, swing, sweet tea, pink lemonade mixture. It's delicious and quite refreshing. I drink it every day. Mm -hmm. I brush my teeth with it. I wash my children in it. Let's begin, shall we? The history of Nash and Cheeky. This is going to be a real treat for everyone out there. Well, as uh, as you guys may remember, I was... um. I was born on a, a commune outside of Monterey, California, so long ago I can't even remember. And Chicky, you remember what I what I did as a child? I believe you were uh, a prodigy of some sort. Is that correct? I was a loser a, prodigy. A loser prodigy. Ace, please, we're on TV. <laughs> Come on, man. I was a bit Play of a now. prodigy. Um, it wasn't it wasn't math or science or violin so or. Right, he wasn't smart enough for that. I <laughs> wasn't anything like that. <laughs> no way. I was a a championship bowler when I was 12 years old. Strike. The PBA had never seen anything like me. Um, so I spent my my early years bowling 8, 10, 12 hours a day, every day, all the time. Youngest PBA championship champion to uh, win the Triple Crown, I believe. Yes, that's um, win the championship in Monterey, where I was from. Certainly. Uh, Albuquerque and Duluth. It's a, hard it's a hard venue, Duluth. Gosh, yes. Duluth is the worst oh, venue. Those, those lanes. lanes are slick. So slick. <laughs> so that's where I met Cheeky Hudson, my good friend and lifelong business partner. Cheeky was, um, he was working in Big Bob's Bolorama in Monterey, California. Uh, do you remember what you did there, Cheeky? I was uh, what we in the business call a, a ping dinger. Yes, yeah, a ping dinger. Setting up the pins and oiling the lanes and, you know, cleaning the hand fans, which is... Incredibly important if you know anything about professional bowling. You've got to have clean hand fans. Yeah. So he was a ping dinger. A lot of people don't know that term, but it is in fact a a real and a, a very well known term in the well, bowling world. Um, but so so Cheeky was a ping dinger, and I was a prodigy bowler. And we met there, and we became decent friends because I would go, oh, every day, and he was there every day, exactly. as I've said. But eventually we parted ways. I, I moved on to bigger and better bowleramas, and Cheeky, he didn't really do much with his well, life. I, excuse me. I briefly pursued a career as a professional highlight player. Well, of course, but you know that highlight, highlight, yes, highlight. You may it's perhaps. I thought that was only in Malaysia. No, it's a beautiful game. Unfortunately, it is yet to catch on in this country. It's yet to catch on. It's really not a shame. not a good thing to dedicate Be yourself honest. to. No, it wasn't a wise choice. I don't. I don't recall you being all that good at highlight either. I think I was. That was pretty good. I'll let you guys debate that. I don't know anything about high life. 
Nor do I, really. <laughs> so he dropped out of high school. He had this short-lived career as a highlight, mediocre highlight player. Um, and he was drafted into the Vietnam War, as so many of our good young men were back then. They don't give exemptions to high-life players. <laughs> I always thought they did, but they don't. He, um, he was a, a croc spotter, isn't that right? Croc spotter, yeah. On a, on a swift boat um, in the Vietnam War. I assume everyone knows what a croc spotter does. You sit on the front of the boat and you point out those crocs. Croc. Croc. <laughs> Unfortunately, he missed one of those crocs, a real big one. Uh, I think it, it was, got. It was a very big one. Yeah. It, it ended About up an eating. Footer. It ended up eating the. Nineteen footer. Yeah. Ended up eating the captain of his swift boat. Yeah. And what a uh, shame. you know. I felt as, bad about that one. As it goes, Cheeky was made captain. It's a strange. Strange twist, turn of events, but. but Worked that well for me. So just a few years out of dropping out of high school, Cheeky Hudson is captaining a swift boat in Vietnam. Yeah. And that's the first time that you met Corporal, Corporal A. Specimen. Good friend here. God, I thought you guys were never going to get to me. I know, I'm blowers. sorry. It all these years while. I've known you. You guys, all, all you guys do is talk. We just, just wrapped talk up, we just wrapped up like 20 do? years yeah. in <sighs> five minutes. I guess you're right. I guess a long and fascinating history. Corporal Ace was... Uh, a tail gunner on Cheeky's boat. Yeah. He did a lot of that. He didn't have a gun. Shot. He didn't have a gun. He just made that noise and spit on everybody. <laughs> um, Don't be modest. But uh, Cheeky and Cheeky and Ace just became really best of friends. Um, they Cheeky seems to have been discharged from uh, the service. I don't believe that uh, Ace ever really was, which is why he's. In no, I never was, because I, like I said before, I was a croc shot. I wasn't a crack shot, I was a croc shot. Yeah, I would point out the crocs and he would shoot them. It was it was just like, you know that Atari game that came out back in the 80s? Yeah, remember I remember that? that one. I mean, I don't remember the 80s very well. Neither do I. But, but it was like a precursor to that. I think they based the game off of me and Cheeky's spotting crocs. Yeah, croc. spotting crocs. Yeah, I mean, it's that it easy. Was, it was that easy. It's that easy. And actually... That's actually where we got our uh, a little business going on, didn't, didn't well, we? we started a little side business, uh, smuggling those those croc pelts. Yep. Or after skins. leaving after leaving the service, carcasses. Um, I mean, Ace and Cheeky did some some light smuggling. A little bit under the table. Yeah, I mean yeah. it was it was. Got to e make a living. It was easy easy money. I mean we're going we're going through the Yellow River and we're just we're just going through them just shooting up crocs, and it's just easy money. Pick them up. Put them in the back. What does a croc skin sell for these days? Oof, I don't even know. I've, I'm long out of that business, but uh, I think back then they go off for what? $5,700. Yeah, $5,700 a pelt. So I hear. How and many crocs know. could you kill in a day? Uh, easily 70 or 80. So I would point them out, he would shoot them, we'd get them on the I boat. I mean, it was. I, I, was I was shooting more uh, crocs than I was Charlie's. It was incredible. And it was yeah. easy, good money. Yeah. I mean, we would, we would take those down to uh, Piaing, Poyang. Pyongyang. 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 Yeah, yeah. There we go. I've, I haven't been there. In you years. were never good with Vietnamese names. No, I mean, come on. I'm from Iowa. Why would wow. I be? This is true. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we would we would go down there. We just what? I mean, it was it was it was milk money basically. Unload uh, some carcasses and you know. And uh, actually, we became the uh, biggest retailers to Italy via Crocskin. So shoes, handbags. <sighs> Underwear, jackets, I mean, leather jackets. They make, they make everything in Italy, by the way. Gloves. I have a, a Croc jacket. It's croc probably croc from us. It when probably was. Croc when did I get it? Water repellent. 1984. 1984. 1984. Yeah, I think that, one of ours. that was still in our circa. Yeah, probably one of ours. So after after the war, after they left the service, um, they, as we've said, did some light smuggling. Most started in Crocs. Um, they they traded all over the Pacific, um, the Midway Islands. Where, where have we been? Midway. Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. We went to India, Madagascar. That, that Madagascar <laughs> trip. That's a cool that was place, a trip, yeah. man. Hey guys, let me just tell you: if you're ever in Madagascar, do not drink the yellow water. Don't ask right? for Jose. Yeah, no, no Jose in Madagascar. Don't say anything about Corporal Ace Bestman because she is not allowed not to ever please go back not there. Ask. Yeah, Madagascar, Malaysia. Man, oh, Malaysia. Malaysia! You remember this? This oh, is part of the story. We spent some, some they ended up in Malaysia. Malaysia. <laughs> um, <laughs> come on, boys! Woo! It's oh, a long man. time ago. Hey, man! What's wrong with living in the past, man? You got no future. I love you, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They ended up having a, a brief affair with um, the Sultan of Malaysia's young daughter, <sighs> Princess, Princess Acapulco. Princess Acapulco. Woo! She was something else. She, huh? was, she was something else. She never, she never got in between us. 
No, she didn't. No, but we got in between her, didn't we? We did. Up top. Never, <laughs> never she, let her. It was a difficult a time for you. for Cheeky and Cheeky and Ace with uh, yeah. you know having this woman splitting her time between the two of them. Yeah. She was um, her father was not happy about it. The Sultan of Malaysia. The Sultan of Malaysia. Which yeah. is why we never went back to Malaysia. Yeah, we're not allowed there either. We're not, we're not going back to Malaysia. Runs in the family. And it was around that time that you you boys uh, hooked up with. Terrence Geffman, isn't that oh, correct? An interesting character he is. Yeah, yes. Terrence. The, uh, uh, Terrence Geffman is the world's largest manufacturer and installer of shag carpet. Self-made billionaire. Yes, he's known as the shag carpet king. We actually had him on the show um, just a few weeks ago. Um, you did? Yes. Yeah. yeah. God, I didn't know about that. It's been a long time. Cheeky hadn't seen him for 20 guy. years. Yeah. I've never seen a guy spend so much money so quickly. But what they yes. started doing was they would, they would uh, do some smuggling, light smuggling, for... You know, like light, light medium smuggling. And so they moved from the croc skin to the shag carpet. And you guys smuggled shag carpet I mean, for a pretty easy 10 transition. years or something, right? Oh, for a very long time. You know, see, I, think, I want you to explain to the viewers what exactly, I mean, explain to them what we did exactly. Because, I mean, we, croc, croc smuggling and shag smuggling simple. are two completely different things, even though they're in the same realm. Well, it started with the, the Reagan administration in the 1986 Shag carpet embargo. Oh, the shag uh, carpet embargo act. I remember that. Economics. Ugh. That was hard on everyone in this country. It wasn't an easy time. So we were forced to illegally smuggle shag carpet all over the world. Because people need their shag carpet. Well, yeah. Whether it's illegal or not, you need your shag carpet. And this is, uh, this is really where I come back into the story, guys. You yes. remember this? Oh. <laughs> well, they were smuggling oh, shag carpet. I was, oh, this was a rough time. I had uh, I'd retired from bowling. I had, I had destroyed my fingers. Accident, eh? You remember that? Oh man! I destroyed my fingers in just a a terrible ball return accident. Just mangled them. The ball comes back up and just. You still got those scars? Smashing them. No, the smashing. scars have all healed. Oh, but I man. I can't move them. Yeah, it's just totally limp in the hand. Touch it. Good to see you. I don't even feel that. You can't feel that. So I couldn't bowl anymore. Same. I was I was living in a in a warehouse. Struck down in his prime. In where was I? Uh, Santa Barbara, I believe. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah, I was yeah. living in a warehouse that I'd inherited from my great-grandfather in Santa Barbara, um, going through various drug-induced hazes and struggling to produce some novels and short fiction, none of which panned out. You were certainly um, no Hunter S. Thompson. No, I wasn't. Well, I mean, I like that, I like that story, uh, Jane and the Flying Beast. Jane and the Flying one. Beast. I that was only that like four or five pages long, right? Yes. I mean, that's about as far as my reading goes, but it was a masterpiece in my book. Yeah, I'm not yeah. reading anything longer than that. That's why I write short fiction. Yeah. But uh, so I started in my, in my warehouse that I lived in, I started um, holding shag carpet for you guys. Yeah. We Cheeky called me our, up. Uh, he was like, hey, Nash, how you doing? You remember when I used to set up your pins? Yeah. And uh, I got, he's like, I got into the smuggling business. I'm smuggling shag carpet now. And I heard you have a warehouse. Can we use your warehouse in Santa Barbara to, you know, sort of Just a home base? Home base of this, operations. This goddamn... Shag carpet embargo is just killing me. So I said, yes, of course, it's great. I, uh, I met Ace for the first time. He was, he was a hoot back then. I don't remember meeting you. Well, you don't remember a lot of things. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to apologize now. I want to make this clear to yours. I want to apologize now that I, I don't remember meeting you. And I just kind of... I, I, I remember the first time I saw you, but it was probably the seventh time I met you. But uh, I just want to... Apologize. I just want to say, hey, I'm Ace. Boy, this is made for TV sentiment. I'm right Nash. Here. So good seeing you after all these years. It's moment are sponsored by Arnold Palmer. So, Cheeky and I were, were back together again. Like two long lost brothers. Like, uh, you know, Bill and Hillary, Batman and Robin, Shirley and whatever the other one's name was. Temple. Huh. I don't think that was it. <laughs> um, uh, Laverne. Laverne and Shirley. There Laverne. it is. There it is. Um, like, you know, two... Isn't your middle daughter's name Laverne? Yeah. And you it forgot is. that name? I mean, I don't remember which daughter it is. I just know there's that daughter. Hey, honey. That has Laverne. Eventually, this was around the time that, that Ace disappeared. Um, a deal went a deal went wrong on some shag carpeting that we were doing. Yeah, in, there was uh, a lot of weapons drawn. and. Yeah. Oh, was, that's when you got out of the business, of too, right, Jiggy? Global agents... Interpol, everyone was involved, yeah. We had to lay low for a while. Identity, Our supremacy. Lady, yeah. yeah, that was bad. All those. Um, ultimatums. Just the whole line. So Ace Bestman disappeared after this deal that went horribly wrong, and he was 
He's been missing for 20 years. Yeah. Where on earth did you go? He was believed to be living, last I heard you were living in Sweden. Um, moonlighting is one half of the of the ska duo Bang and Olafsson. Um, I can't really confirm that. Can you deny it? I can deny it. I'll deny it all day, but uh, I can't really tell you guys where I've been. All I can tell you is that I've been, I've sailed the seven seas, I've been to the four corners of the earth, and I've nailed Pamela Anderson. That's all I can say. So you, you weren't behind the 1993 song Rebel Bucket by, by Bang and Olafsson? I can't really... I like the song. I can't necessarily say I was part of that song. They had a few uh, other hits, Bang and Olafsson. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. I don't. Yeah, I can't. One of them was uh, stemmed Minecraft. Oh yes. Yeah, I heard. It was just like. I heard those good song. Yeah, I remember that. One. That was a good one. Boo! Yeah, what was that? Like '96 or something. Anyways, yeah, some sort of tribute song to Lavar Burton, I believe, as well. <laughs> Laverne. So we hadn't seen Ace for 20 years until he called us up about five days ago. He said, Cheeky, Nash, it's me, Ace Bestman, your old friend, you know. We did some light smuggling, the shag carpeting, the crocs, croc spotting. I mean, I, w I was so lucky to hear you guys. On you message. heard us on DS106 Radio, isn't yeah, that right? Yeah, I was, uh, I was down in the Keys, man, and I was, I was just sitting there. And I heard this, I heard it on the, uh, I was fly fishing. You ever seen those like big marlin? Fly just, fishing. Well, I guess fly, you know, sail fishing, not fly fish. I apologize. Deep sea fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah deep sea one. fishing. With you the, were uh, fishing for big sure. Fins, you know, big fin the sail fishes shoot out of the water. Those Marlins. are dangerous. Yeah, and the uh, the captain, oh, captain, the big uh, one of our friends from uh, Vietnam. Do you remember uh, Jose? Ah, oh, Jose. Yeah, yeah, Jose's running That's a, a uh, sailfish, big uh, sailfish uh, business down in the Keys. So I was nice. with him. And I was fishing, and I had this really big one in there. I was leaning back, and I hear, I hear Cheeky in my ear. I'm like, where is that coming from? And I mean, of course, thanks, I lost the fish. Oh, but I heard you guys. That. I heard you guys on the radio, so that's why I'm here. Uh, I wanted to come see you guys again. It's good to see you guys again. It's, it's, oh, it's great long. to have him back. I mean, this, this self-imposed exile that he's been on, you know, partially because of his t trouble with the Army. Yeah. Um, but he's here, he's back, and... We're we're gonna rekindle our relationship. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna rekindle all day long. Are you man. planning on being in town for a while? I mean, or can you stay? I don't. I actually, I think I probably have to go right now because I've uh, probably had too much screen time. But uh, the army's is probably yeah. Active. So next time I see you guys, uh, I don't know how it's gonna be, but wow. I love seeing you guys, we'll and keep in touch, I'll have Secret I have mail. another guest for you guys because I knew I had to run soon. Yeah. So uh, let me just uh, bring him in. You 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 will remember him. I don't think you know him, Nash. Who's that? Uh, Tim Doom. Remember Tim ah, Doom? Ah, Tim. Yes. Tim Doom is here. Yeah. So I think yes. he's gonna. Tim oh, Doom. Tim Doom. Here he is. All right. Oh. So uh, I'll see you guys later. You hey, Ace. Hey, that Yeah. Leave your number with my girl downstairs. Her so, name's Donna. She's very nice. You know somebody named Tim Doom, Cheeky? Yes. Uh, the uh, the so-called godfather of smuggling. Ah, I, yes. I, I remember you hear, telling me about this. I learned everything I know about smuggling from him. And that's how you and Ace know Tim Doom. He was Correct. just a, a renowned smuggler. He took us on as his, his protégés with our... Uh, you must be uh, Mr. Doom. Tim Doom, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tim Mr. Doom. Doom. Pleasure Very to meet you. Good to see you. Nice guy. It's been, uh, thank you. It's been a, it's been a long time. Chile, spring skiing. Yeah, a bit of spring skiing, you know, the powder and, and all that. Terrible accident. So, Mr. Doom, you're you are the godfather of light smuggling. Well, I, I've been smuggling for well over 45 years now. Wow. I started in Vietnam. Um, that's where I met uh, Ace and I met Chi Chi. Um, I showed them the roots, uh, the ropes. As I moved on, I moved out of Vietnam, got out of the shared carpet business altogether. I went to actually, yeah, that was a dangerous time. I went over to the Himalayas and started smuggling llamas. Mm. And I brought in probably one of the first people to bring llamas into the United States. Um, I made a killing in the late 70s. Um, and then I turned to uh, smuggling basically people. Uh, that was probably human the most trafficking. That's that called the coyotes. Most what they call them. Yeah. And so yeah, and it was a material. I liked the idea of dealing with people. I'm a mm -hmm. people person. Yeah. So being able to kind of smuggle people and let them go, and sometimes it was for good. Sometimes they weren't going into the best situation. But right. that wasn't my call. I was just a middleman. Mm -hmm. But and that's how you have to think as a smuggler. Yeah. I mean, no one can blame you. I and mean, it's a business. Just, yeah. Trying to make a living. So I'm out of the human smuggling business altogether now. Now yeah, I have okay. a new business that I'd like to actually take this time on your show to talk a little bit. I'd love to hear about it. I'm a soul smuggler now. I don't smuggle people. I smuggle their souls. 
between uh, various dimensions, celestial dimensions, or yeah, just I'm geographic? consciousness is really. I mean, I move them from one consciousness to another, wow. and their body follows their soul. But it's not their mind; uh -huh. it's their soul. It's their whole being. So I'm in the business now of smuggling beings. So how do you um, how do you hold a soul? What do you put in a box? No, you hold it here. It's uh, all it's all through the mind. So you could be smuggling right now, and we wouldn't even know. And that's the whole thing. You can't get caught. You don't wow. even have to... There's no contract. You're not based out of anywhere. You've I got mean, no... Get the shit carpet business, right? You guys were running... I mean, you guys have people on your tail. You got 75 square feet Interpol. shag in the back. You don't want that. That's true. We're talking here. There is no evidence. And a goddamn evidence. shag carpet embargo. There's no... <laughs> Damn it, Reagan! There's no evidence. So I have a new outfit where I run this whole item. Because you had your warehouse for the shag carpet in the 70s, right? Yeah, the home base. You know, well, I have a new class. And I'm going to use this to talk a little bit about. There's been some talk on the internet about this guy Jim Groom, and I've his heard of him. classes. That whole idea, that's a sham. He says he has hundreds of people out there on the internet doing all these things. Well, I have two disciples. I have two people who work for me. Right. And we're the real DS106, and we're the ones who really deal in souls. Jim Groom deals in marketing. Jim He's Groom a deals. He is the worst of the worst. He's a dillweed. He's yeah. a dillweed. He's not really about DS-106. He doesn't believe in anything. He will sell you out at the first, first sign of cash. you got to watch out for this character. That's right. I, on the other hand, I'm interested in your soul. Right. DS-106 is about transforming souls okay. and taking them with me to the next level. DS, dealer of souls. Makes I don't need now. the money. Yeah, dealer of souls. Exactly. Makes Makes I don't sense. need the money anymore. This is some heavy stuff. Yeah, what I'm about is the transubstantiation of the whole entire process of education vis-a-vis -vis souls. Because that seems like the, the fastest has, way to do it. Education has been the most soulless process in the world. Right? Tell me about it. Nothing needed yeah. a bigger shot in the ass than education. Am I right? Certainly. Am yeah. I right? Cheeky could dress out of high right right school. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You guys <laughs> get out of high school. You think I went to college? Listen, someone like Cheechy, for example, or even Cheeky, for example, is a perfect, perfect disciple of the DS-106, right? Very little information, very little sense of the world, right? Can't know. really make sense of people or other things. He's very easily shaped. It's in a, in a, he's been in a fog for 30 you years. You tell him, you know, good work, Cookie you up. comment, doing good stuff. Any kind Just of a work. little kind of, any kind of little bit of like, hey, good work. He's yours. Yeah. yeah. And it's so easy to convert people. Mm -hmm. And good. once you convert their mind, their soul follows. They'll do anything for you. Right? They can't trace that back to me. No. Jim Groom, uh, that's not the way forward. Tim Do, on the other hand, he is the second. A better guy. and brighter future. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm out of the business of smuggling contraband, and I'm into the business of smuggling souls. And I believe that that's really going to change everything. I'm just taking a note of this. Got to watch out for that Groom character. Yes. Watch yeah. out you know for your him. soul. Groom? Yeah. Yes, I've, I've met him. I've had some dealings with him. Yeah, he's problematic yeah. in some deep ways. I've, I've, I've talked to him I probably don't... once or twice. Whenever I talk to him, he speaks in a language that I would use if I was talking to a piece of drywall. It yeah. do, it's like you're wasting your time. Yeah, and it's, not only that, it's a lot of hype, a lot of enthusiasm, but there's nothing there. There's yeah, no like, there there. Oh, blogging, blogosphere, exactly. education. No, it's but it, it's really behind that. He's like the the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain. It's just a a little guy who's trying to make a buck off your mind. Absolutely, exactly. This is some, <laughs> some Matrix type stuff, man. Yeah, it is. It's and let's think. Let's meta. think about the pills you can take. There are a whole series of pills you can take. I mean, you all now are going out into the brave world, right? You're graduating right. from this university, this fine university, right? And what the hell are you going to do with your life? You have a couple options. God knows. Right? Go work retail. Ugh. Right? Mm. That might happen. Or you could come over to my church. Right? The church of saving souls. We do tend to swerve towards the illicit side of things. Yeah. yeah. This, this, could be, you could, this could be it. And this is our broadcast platform. We got the vertical and the horizontal. Jim Groom stole that from me. We have the radio. We have the video. Right? We're we have the meeting. platform for all the stuff we've done over the years. Ace Bestman, yeah. right? If he had this kind of platform, do you understand what he could have done? He's done a lot more than he did. And man. we're not we're not taking advantage of this at all.
What a waste of We have to start that now. No, we really that's do. what we're doing here today. That's right. The vertical and the horizontal. The vertical and the horizontal. I'm worried about the security of the vertical of our shit, to and be honest. The, horizontal. the security of your shit for like yeah. how? Just what shit? All the shit. The shit of people? How, yeah, man. How just are we going to. The security of the small children? The whole thing. How can we Everyone live be in this. Out. In this world, I don't even see how this. This works. has been look. That's the whole thing. We you can, talk about the we can occupy all four quadrants. You talk about the matrix, and you have. We could. No, only the first and Let's third. Let's talk about this for a second, oh. right? I think that's Ace Sesame on the phone. Ace, uh, I think it? they got him. Uh -oh. Damn it! The he army found him. About the security of his. I knew that he should not have come back here. Yeah, I was terrible, terrible. I think by you putting him on the TV and on the radio, we should have given one. You may have. You may very much put him in. You think this is only called for jeopardy? Probably. You get you get one call, Ace, and then you're going to military prison for 45 years. And he called us. Yeah. And we are not choice. answering because <laughs> we're, we're, we're stuck doing in this, this sort of thing. That's right. Man. We're on to the next thing. Ace Bestman had his time. His time is gone. Yeah. But your Poor time guy. is here now. Poor guy. So what are you going to do with it? I'm going to drink the Kool Aid. We got some it's things to ponder. Time. Yeah. Right. Here's your first. Better yet. Here's your first mission. Drinking Arnold Palmer half and half. Here's your first mission, should you choose to take it. I want you to find this so-called Jim Groom, and I want you to expose him for the fraud that he is. To the world. I think using world. our substantial And how resources. are you going to do that? What are you going to use to do it? The, what is this? The vertical. The vertical and the, and the horizontal. Horizontal. The horizontal. And our spy friend. And our spy friend. We've got a spy friend. Who's your spy friend? Gary at the spy. Gary at the spy, yeah. He used to work for Terrence Geffman. Yeah, Gaffman. damn good spy. Geffman was an interesting. Who is the other one you had? Because I am a big fan of your radio show. Besides all the soul talk and smuggling, well, uh, you had Dr. another Perry gentleman, Chessman. Well, yes. he was interesting though. I never did read his book. Uh, none of us nobody did. did. No, no. archaeology okay. and you. But there was another one who actually spent a lot of time in England. Ah, and that's Drexel Pocketlove. Oh, Drexel. What a what a wonderful character he was. What a crazy guy. And what an interesting. He was like Loves in many keys. ways Forrest Gump. Yeah. He yeah. found himself in every possible. Kind of important historical He'd just pop moment up through yeah, rock and that, roll music over that, 50 years. Pass. No matter for who, the train. who was there, he was America. there. I mean, there's the unwritten, the secret history of rock and roll. That guy wrote for you on your show. Yeah. yeah beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful thing. He's he's far too off the beaten track to really put that into a book. You know, he's not Barry Jessman, but uh, he's yeah. living in Sperryville, Virginia now. Sperryville. His, his wife's his, a farmer. I believe. A farmer. Yeah, he's living yeah. with a farmer. We go to uh, the pubs every now and then. We're he was now. great. Yeah. Well, Tim, it's been enlightening to have you on the show. That's right. I well, still can't for having me on begin to wrap my head around. I'm still doing this, this and looking at just, my hands. We're gonna yeah. be doing this for the next yeah. 40 years. Let's do it together. Let's end the show with it. Ready? Yeah. The vertical. The vertical. vertical. And the horizontal. The horizontal. horizontal. Okay, and now we gotta say we can own. Ready? We can own. We can own. The vertical. And the horizontal. Let's do it together. Yeah. We can, we own, can own. The vertical. And the and horizontal. horizontal. Perfect. You guys, big things from you. Big fans. Tim, nice thanks for coming on the show. Hey, Great to have you on, as Tom, always. Cheeky. Good to see you. you guys it's been far too long. Thank you. Have with me. You have yourselves a good afternoon. I'm Nash Dongwell, and this is my good friend. Cheeky Hudson.